what Satan talking about. With all these demons, these devils, these principalities trying to rise in power, boasting on the knowledge, what they talking about? Jesus. With the most spirits of hatred trying to take me off, setting up traps, spending all their time and their energy for nothing. Jesus. Financial lack, abundance, worry, death, promotion, destruction, worry, chaos. What's it all talking about? Jesus. When I got to work, testimony time, boy. I'm on that coffee, boy. And I feel like giving my God, giving my king. If they can give the devil there all they got, bobbing their head like rock stars, screaming at the top of their lungs, why can't I do that for Jesus? Why can't I give all to Jesus? I don't care what nobody says. I'm going to scream the name of Jesus. I'm going to worship God with everything inside of my body. I'm going to use my mind to give God glory. I'm going to worship the King of Kings, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ with all my soul. I don't care how many times I fall. I'm going to get up and I'm going to glorify the name of the living God. And I'm going to seek his space. And I'm going to get it right. And I'm going to bring God pleasure. I'm going to bring the Father pleasure. When he hears my prayers, he's he going to release his glory. I'm going to bring God pleasure. I'm going to stay in a realm so close to God. And I'm a chase. I'm a hunt. I told Jesus, you can't play hide and go seek with me. I will find you. If I got to go 30 days without eating, if I got to quit my job, if I got to go a week on vacation, but just stay on my face before your feet, then that's what I'm going to do. If I got to walk 100,000 miles, that's what I'm going to do. I bet I'm going to get Jesus, every piece of him. I'm starving for God. After I'm, I don't even, after I be fasting now for three days. I don't even eat no food. And then when I eat food, I get pissed off. I'm like, man, I don't even want this food, man. I don't even like this food. I'm tired of this sleep. I'm t I want God. I'm longing for this God. I want God more than anything. I got a testimony. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. When I got to work, the devil's a punk. My manager told me, we gonna need you to stay till seven, an extra hour. Is that fine? When my mom goes to work at six, she picks me up. I said, that's fine. So I called my mom, let her know, you don't need to pick me up. I'm gonna walk home, right? Anyways, went to work, blah, blah, blah. The devil was trying to move on me and my job. We started, see, at your job, Let's talk about infant currency. Holy Spirit, possess me. I release the anointing of God on you right now. I release the thunder and the fire of heaven over you right now. I decree and declare, loose the angels of power. Loose the angels of alignment to align you with the will of God. I loose the angels of victory over you and over this region and over your establishment, over your region and the connection of this prayer that they will bring the revelation of Jesus Christ. They will bring the word of God. They will bring new testimonies. They will bring new prosperity, new ways, new abundance, new opportunities, new souls to connect with for a new job opportunity, for a new meeting, to a new declaration, to a new power, to a new level in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I lose Michael, I lose Raziel, I lose all the archangels, I lose the glory of God, I lose the kingdom of heaven, I lose the atmosphere of heaven over your life, over your soul, over your mind, over your spirit, over your body, over your eyes, over your DNA. At your job, there is a way to release the glory of God. It's not just what I prayed. There is, there is a way. At my job, there's somebody that likes to rap. So I noticed that when I rap every, about God, everybody else starts rapping about God. That connects the glory and enhances it and intensifies it. The devil don't like that. So I noticed if I start rapping about God, it starts a chain reaction and everybody else begins to rap about the Lord. I always go in the cooler or the freezer when I first get to my job and I begin to take over the atmosphere. I don't try to individually touch each soul. If I can take over the atmosphere by loosing the angels, commanding the blood of the lamb, and taking over the atmosphere with the authority that I have in Jesus Christ, the atmosphere of the heavens has taken over for the kingdom of God. Now God and angels can move in freely. But I'm learning to take it even deeper and for God's presence to get even thicker. And it's not about just what I carry. It's about activating others around you. When you can get this person to start talking about Jesus, when you can, I always tell them if they're going to work the window, you have to bless them. Tell them about Jesus. So people are starting to say, you have a blessed day. Just by changing their language, 
Their job is more enhanced, they're more happier, they're more excited, the glory and the presence of God in their life is beginning to exfoliate. Because what you need to understand, God is inside of you. So many Christians and people, anybody, not just Christians, not just religion, people spend their whole life until they go to the grave when God was in them the whole time. All revelation they ever wanted to know was in them. They were always waiting on God, but God said, I've already given you everything. What are you going to do with it? It's releasing. Stop keeping Jesus in a prison. Release God by singing, by worshiping. But you who hold the power, and it's for the one that perseveres. Every day of my job, I'm trying to persevere. How can I make God's presence thicker? How can I chain activate this? How can I get him to talk about God when I don't feel like it? How can I keep the presence of the living God strong so miracles and miraculous things can happen at McDonald's, Burger King? It's the presence of God that changes people. It doesn't matter if you're in a church with 50,000 people. It doesn't matter if you're on the highway, in the streets, with a bomb. It doesn't matter if you're at fast food. It's the presence of God that changes atmospheres. But anyways, I got off work. I went to the store, got a drink, some coffee, double shot. Now, I don't know why I'm drinking this. This is demonic. This is demonic. You know what this is? Poseidon and all this stuff. Yes, it is. They sacrificed Red Bull. I mean, I mean, all that stuff. Mountain or monster energy drink. The three lines you see represent 666. If you look at the Hebrew alphabet, how you'll see 666. I stopped drinking that. But this is a this is a principality, right? A picture of a principality. Remember, Satan influences everything on images and anything. I don't know why. You know what I'm saying? But I'm drinking it, okay? All right. But I can't, I started to loosen the angels. And then I said, as soon as I began to pray, I really did not feel like walking home. I just got off a three-day fast. I was at work, and the effects of the fast began to hit me strong. And I began to feel so weary. I tried to eat. I tried drinking a Coke. Sugar is demonic. Every time I drink a soda, I just feel evil and just darkness consume my mind. But I still, I'm not perfect. I still drink a soda every once in a while, like a, like a, I know I shouldn't call you. Don't call yourself a moron. Yeah, that's blasphemy. That's blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Forgive me, Jesus. When you call, it's simple things we do that we don't realize. When you call yourself a moron, stupid, dumb, you're blaspheming against the image of God. Don't do that. Even if you're just trying to be humble and humility, whatever, don't do that. Anyways, I didn't feel like walking home. So I didn't even walk a quarter of a mile. I didn't even walk, not even a quarter, not even halfway, not even a quarter of my destination. And as, as soon as I began the prayer, God answered my prayer and said, God, can you please send someone to pick me up? As soon as I said that, somebody stopped right behind me in a car. And, I, and he said, hey, you need a ride home? I said, yes, brother. I was just praying to God to send somebody. And we were talking a little bit, everything, you know what I'm saying? And I was telling him, he was talking, I was talking, you know what I'm saying? This blah, 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 you know, human normal talk. But my mind, I said, see, all right? So we did that, and I was just saying, hey, man, I was going to walk home. I was going to drink an energy drink and just focus and use my mind. He's like, hey, man, you got a good head on your shoulder. Boom, that's when I went off in the Holy Ghost. I said, brother, you know what I'm saying? I used to be addicted to drugs, addicted to crystal meth. I used to have hatred, anxiety, me, anxiety, me, anxiety, fear. I was consumed by hatred, evil in me. I was locked up, but as soon as I said yes to Jesus Christ, all that hatred, all that agony, all that addiction just broke. I've never felt this much life. I've never felt this much fulfillment. I never felt this much freedom. I'm not on any drugs. I've been clean and sober five years. I'm free and I've never felt this much riches. All these gifts and power inside of me that I never, never knew were in there begin to activate. And I released my testimony. And I said, brother, I thank you so much for giving me a ride. I ask right now that Jesus would reign his splendor and his glory. And he would show you a side of him you've never seen. And you would never be the same. Testimony and I released the prayer of him. And I got his number. You know what I'm saying? So that's a testimony. And you know what? If, 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 I, if I didn't walk home, that would have never happened. That right there, that encounter right there, that moment right there is worth all the paychecks I've ever got from Whataburger. Because of Whataburger has blessed me. I'm paying child support. I bought a computer. But that moment right there, and I need you to hear this if you don't hear nothing else. Okay, that moment right there was worth more than all the paychecks I've ever received from Whataburger. That was my ultimate paycheck. Every time you do that, that happens. That is beyond anything you could dream, desire, want, wish. That is the fulfillment of the covenant. That is the fulfillment of your life duty. That is the fulfillment of your life purpose. That is the fulfillment of God himself. Okay. And you know, in my flesh, I was like, man, I don't want to walk home, man. I'm a call. Don't listen to your flesh. God always does supernatural things when you don't expect it. And when 
in a situation where you don't feel good. We always think it's going to happen when we feel good, when we're in the anointing, when we're in the presence, and yeah, it happens. But God really does supernatural things to transform your life when you're tired, when you're going through a struggle, when you least expect it, God likes to hit you. When you least expect it, God likes to hit you. When you least expect it, that's when the Father loves to hit you. And he always does it in a way so you will know that it was him. So you cannot say, well, maybe I did that. Maybe it was coincidence. He does things so you'll know that only he did it. So only he gets the glory. So you will know that was me. What else, man? What else, Holy Ghost? But I was walking. And the Lord was showing me on my, on my fast. I just got off. I went to work. God is good. Thank you, Father. I don't even know, bro. I'm just releasing this God inside of me, and I'm excited to do it. I'm starting to love my God channel, not my YouTube channel, my Jesus channel, because God is really moving on it much stronger than previously. You know, he anointed me. He anointed the channel. The devil been trying to fight it. But now he's really moving on it. In so many ways, and it's becoming powerful. And he's launching new structures on the channel, and it's taking me into levels of God. Matthew, we need to pat him out of the window. Sure, I'll get right to it. Father God, I praise you, my King. I lift your name on high, King Jesus. I thank you for the soul I was able to tell about your name and give her my testimony about what you did in my life, Lord. I pray and I decree that will happen daily, daily encounters. I'm telling you, Lord, whoever you put in front of my face, I'm going to baptize them in the Holy Ghost and fire you. I'm going to give them the testimony of your goodness and your glory. And I'm not going to hold back. I'm not going to be quiet. I'm going to give the full testimony and full expression. I don't care if they think I'm crazy, Father. I'm not going to hold back, Lord. Well, maybe then. No, I'm going to tell them straight up what you did for me, Jesus. Let me encounter and have more encounters, Father. And I promise I'm going to tell people about you, Jesus. I'm going to bring billions to Christ. I'm going to bring this world to you, Lord. Whether it's through the music, whether it's through the gift, whether it's through the anointing, whether it's through the internet, whether I got to walk, whether it's through random encounters, whether it's through I got to work at this fast food, this fast food, whether whatever, Father, I'm going to trust in you, Lord. And I'm going to tell people about your name. And I'm going to be satisfied in you and what you did on the cross. And I'm going to seek your face, my God. I'm going to know your word. I'm going to stay in prayer. I'm going to dedicate my life to you no matter how much temptation, no matter what lust I'm struggling with, no matter what I'm struggling with. You ain't struggling with nothing. No matter how many times I fall, you don't fall. No matter how many times I'm jacked up, you ain't messed up. You perfect. You holy. You always rising. And that's what I'm focused on, Father. And I just love you. And I thank you for this testimony. And I release it to everybody. And I bless you, my God. I praise you, Father. I thank you, Father, for delivering me from pornography, from addiction, from hatred, from anger, from fear, from not being able to talk to people, go out in the public, not being able to eat in public restaurants, having no hope, sitting around being lazy, being dirty, being filthy. I thank you for delivering me from all that. I cannot even sit here for one minute and after all these principalities I've warred against, these demonic spirits, I cannot say I did this on my own at all. You have given me the victory through your son. You have won it on the cross. And I praise you, my God. I love you, my king. And I worship you, God. Jesus. Amen. I'll be back. But that's it for now. God bless you.